Hello to everyone, welcome and thank you very much for registering to this webinar organized by the ECLE World Secretariat for potential applicants to the TAP. Uh, this will be about introducing and explaining the, the TAP, Transformative Actions Program. Uh, I'm Annabelle Roblanc, Junior Officer at the World Secretariat and I am working on project development regarding the TAP and COP21 where ECLE and partners are organizing a TAP pavilion. Um, I will present this webinar today together with uh, Ate Oksanen, who is a junior officer on advocacy in COP21, also at the World Secretariat. Um, Ate, if you would like to introduce yourself. Yes, so welcome to everyone. Yes, so welcome to everyone. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, so as Annabelle said, I'm, I'm working with her here at the uh, World Secretariat, and I will be taking you through the application process and uh, showing you the uh, application forms. Right, uh, Louisa Weiss from the Knowledge Management Team at the World Secretariat is also with us today and she will support us regarding technical matters. Uh, Louisa, if you would like to say a few words uh, on this topic, please. Yes, also from my side, a warm welcome to this webinar. I just want to um, have a few words on how we use the system. Um, so for the duration of the presentations given, you will be muted. Um, however, if you have questions, please feel free to type them into the questions box. We will have a question and answer session in the end of the webinar, where we will then go back to your questions and are also happy to unmute you in order to engage in a discussion with you. If you have technical problems, also feel free to type them into the question box. I am happy to help you from remote as far as I can. Enjoy this webinar. Thank you, Luisa. So let's start now. Um, so you should be able to see the outline of this uh, webinar on your screen. So first of all, um, the webinar will last approximately an hour. Um, as Luisa said, so first of all, there will be a 20 to 25 minute presentation where we will take you through the tab, introducing and explaining the concepts of the tab and its meaning for ECLA's work and strategy. Uh, the content of the program as well, that is the four pillars of the tab. And then some general information on the tab 2015 application and selection process, that is the selection of tab projects in the run up to COP21 next December. So this will include information on the timeline of the process, on the selection criteria, on the application form and on the selection process. And so afterwards we will have a question and answer session where we will answer your questions. Uh, also note that as a complement to this webinar we will send you afterwards a link to a presentation given by Yunus Arikan, uh, who is the head of global policy and advocacy at ECLE. Um, and that presentation, video presentation, will give you some more background information about the international climate negotiations and also uh, ECLE's advocacy work towards COP21. So let's start now about, um, so what is the TAP first of all? So the TAP is a 10-year program the purpose of which is to accelerate the implementation of climate actions of local and subnational governments, uh, both in the pre-2020 and post-2020 phases. Uh, at the same time, it will seek to raise the level of ambitions at all levels, local, national and international. So how will it do that? Uh, more, specific, more specifically, the TAP will seek to improve access to existing capital flows to cities and regions and to catalyze additional capital flows from both public and private investors. So um, some, to give you some more information, background information on the TAP, um, the TAP is a response to a previous attempt by local and subnational governments to push for a 10-year action program to be adopted within the UN FCCC framework. Um, this proposal was put forward uh, in the framework of the Local Government Climate Roadmap uh, in 2013. And so following up with this effort, now ECLAN partners have launched the TAP outside of the UNFCCC process while hoping that, of course, at some point uh, it will feed into the UN process. So going back to the missions of the TAP. So the TAP has two separate but closely interrelated missions. The first is political and the second is the climate mission of the TAP, you can say. So regarding the political mission, 
um, the, the policy commission of the TAP is really supported by Clay's role as a key actor representing cities and local governments in the UN FCCC negotiation process. Uh, in, to the extent that the, the ICLE is, is the um, focal point of um, the LGMA constituency, local government and municipal authorities constituency. And so in this context, the TAP will um, advocate for better and quicker access to larger amounts of climate finance for cities and regions. Uh, the reason being that, as we all know, this is where climate change can be tackled effectively and because effective climate action at all levels has become urgent um, given the challenges linked to climate change but also increasing um, urban urbanization. And so importantly by engaging in the TAP and putting forward proposals of uh, transformative action, local governments and their networks will pursue and intensify their efforts to bridge the gap between the negotiation process and the implementation process. So this leads us to the climate mission of the TAP. So the TAP will aim, aims to mobilize cities and regions to design these transformative and bankable climate actions. And it aims to assist the pre-brokering between some national authorities and financing bodies where possible. So before I continue, let me just clarify exactly what ITLE and partners can do for cities and regions through the TAP. Um, so what the TAP can do is to offer visibility to submitted projects, both through the pavilion and the online platform, which I will talk about later on. It will offer also the opportunity to engage more directly with representatives of the financial and business sector, who will also be invited to the pavilion and uh, to consult this online platform. Um, regarding the application process in itself, um, we can provide here at the World Secretariat assistance in filling in the form that is answering any question uh, applicants may have, providing feedback to enhance the quality of the application once it has been submitted, providing translations as well, which is uh, under, uh, which is in progress at the moment. So this is what we can do. However, um, what should be clear is that um, eClan partners through the TAP can only assist in the pre-brokering. That is, the TAP cannot guarantee the funding uh, of the project. That's a key point. Um, and uh, I should say also that the, really the key bonus of the TAP is the fact that it is supported, uh, as I said previously, but by eClan's key political role as LGMA focal points. Um, that is, ICLE really defends uh, the interest of local uh, governments within the UN negotiation process. It's also involved in a variety of other climate-related international fora, and so really ICLE, together with uh, TAP partners, have strong advantage as the facilitator of this pre-brokering -bro process between cities and financing institutions. Now, um, to go into more details about how this is going to be achieved, the, these two missions which I just talked about. So first of all, a process of mobilization of key actors at local, national and international levels, uh, as you can see. Um, and secondly, a process of visibilization of real and potential climate action. Uh, that is, actions already being implemented at the local and subnational level, but also the potential, of course. This will be done drawing on already existing tools, for example, um, reporting platforms. Uh, also, as I said before, the TAP will have its own tools. So, a TAP um, online platform, which, which can be um, which is a, a kind of uh, online registry of climate ambition, if you could say, and then uh, the pavilion, which will be organized each year at COP, starting this year at COP21. So the TAP will guide ECLA's work with and for cities and regions over the next five to ten years, this is um, the key point, and it will enable uh, ECLA to better connect their cities to funding opportunities. And so really, as, you, as, as I try to, to explain, the TAP will really contribute to ICLE's political agenda towards but also beyond COP21. So if we look close, closer at the, um, the content of the program, so um, first of all, you can see the first pillar is the TAP project pipeline, uh, which is the process by which every year up to 100 TAP projects are selected in the run-up to the annual COP and presented during this COP, starting this year at COP21. 
in Paris. So during this process, cities and regions are actively mobilized to apply to the TAP, and then they are, of course, supported in the application as far as we, we can support them within the TAP team. And um, as you may already be aware, this uh, process is already underway since application started on the 5th of May. Um, and so um, I will talk later about the deadlines. Uh, turning to the TAP platform, so this is the second pillar. Um, so before the COP, all the projects submitted by cities and regions will be featured on this online platform in a unified format. And so the idea is that really this platform is going to centralize the projects, make them more visible, uh, so as to enable financing institutions to have access to relevant information about them and to con consider financing. Um, yes, so that's the second pillar. Turning to the third pillar, which is the TAP pavilion. So this, you could say, is the physical component of the program. Uh, that is the space where the selected TAP projects will be presented to national delegations, international donors, financing agencies, etc., both from public and private sectors during the COP. Uh, and so the first pavilion, TAP 2015, will be organized at COP 21. Finally, the last pillar is TAP Advocacy for accelerate, Accelerated Climate Action. Uh, this uh, work will build on previous achievements in local climate advocacy and it will seek to diversify and strengthen it in various ways. Um, so, um, of course, the, this work will try to raise awareness of the potential of transformative subnational climate action. Uh, importantly, it will seek to deepen the dialogue with national governments, promoting effective vertical integration between different levels of government, to reinforce the engagement with international and national funding bodies and development agencies, and also to continue to coordinate the information sharing and debates on local and subnational climate finance uh, in uh, the realm of um, international climate negotiations. So really, the TAP advocacy work will try and create this essential interaction nexus with all levels of government and also, of course, to engage uh, with financing bodies. Now, turning to the TAP 2015 application and selection process. So, first of all, here is the timeline of the process. So, um, as I said before, applications uh, already started in May. Um, so, as you can see, there are uh, three deadlines. Uh, 15th of June, 15th of July, 15th of August. Uh, and so, no more applications will be accepted after the 15th of September. Um, so, note, please note that these, three, these uh, three deadlines, well, four if you take into account the 15th, um, are independent from each other. That is, um, you can very well submit uh, one project, whatever deadline, or several projects at different deadlines. So, yes, they are independent from each other. Um, in July, uh, and June, July, well, in July, partners will be invited to appoint, appoint sorry, a member uh, to seats uh, in the TAP selection panel and the expert committee. So I will come back to this point later on. And the selection process will start from the 15th uh, of August. And then uh, in October, uh, applicants, successful applicants will be notified. And uh, finally, during COP21, uh, the 100 projects will be presented in the pavilion. Now, um, so if we look at precisely what is a TAP project, so when we talk about a TAP project, we, we refer first of all to two types of projects, fast track transformers and post 2020 transformers. So uh, the two kind of projects differ uh, at, on three levels. First of all, the stage they have reached, that is either they are already fully designed with a clear budget and action plan, a management structure already defined, or uh, the project only has a strong concept existing, but mm, it's not really defined on the other levels. Uh, regarding the needs identified in terms of enabling the implementation of the projects, so either the project only needs uh, funding through investment or grants, or uh, not only funding, but also additional finance, but also additional advice, expertise in terms of capacity building, strategy development, technical and financial advice, etc. And in that case, it would, it would be a post-2020 transformer. 
And so finally, we the the, the the two types of project differ on the implementation period. That is, when the project would be ready for implementation. So either pre-2020 or post-2020. And so please note that applicants can submit uh, either type of projects um, now. There is no restriction on that. So if we look closer at the criteria for overall selection and distribution of uh, the TAP projects, so overall we are looking uh, in the selection process, we are looking that uh, five criteria are um, fulfilled. So first of all, we are looking for um, the level where we are looking at the level of transformative potential, which I will define in the next slide. Um, we are looking for a regional balance between projects. That is how um, that we are looking that they are distributed fairly equally between the north and the south. We are looking for a balance of mitigation and adaptation projects. We are looking for a sectorial balance, so projects in transport, energy, biodiversity, housing, etc. And finally, for transparency, that is how informed the different, the different applications are. Now, if we look closer at the criteria for, individual, for selecting individual type projects, so the key aspect is that a TAP project should have the potential to transform society. This means responding to three criteria, being ambitious, cross-cutting, and inclusive. Um, so you can see uh, on the screen the different the definition of these three criteria. So for the ambitious criteria, we, we mean that the project can be either a first-time project that will benefit a large proportion of the population, or it can be an existing project uh, which will be scaled up to benefit an even, an even larger proportion of the population. Regarding the cross-cutting criterion, uh, we look at how different communities will benefit from the project, how different types of resources will benefit in terms of uh, management, so sustainable, sustainable energies, um, air quality, land use, procurement, etc and how the project contributes to other national, national and uh, global sustainability goals. Regarding the uh, inclusiveness of the project, so we look at how and if the project encourages cross-departmental um, coordination for uh, effective implementation of the project, um, how, how and if the citizens and local stakeholders are actively engaged in the project, um, how the project fosters collaboration with other levels of government, and finally, how and if the private sector is actively engaged uh, in the project. So, turning now to um, the TAP application form. So, Ate will now tell you more about this and how to access the application form and to fill it out. So, Ate, this is your turn. Our all right, thank you very much, Annabelle. Uh, so I hope uh, everyone can see my screen. Yeah, I think it's it's working now. Um, so yes, so hello to everyone. So I'll be taking you through the application process quite quickly here. Um, so local and some national governments who wish to submit their projects uh, to the TAP may do so either through the TAP offline form or through the online application process. But for both, uh, you will need to go to the TAP website, tap-potential.org. So it's this website here, and you would go to the apply section over here. And um, as you can probably see on the side here, um, the website is already available uh, in French and in Spanish as well as English. Uh, but for now, the application process uh, is available in uh, only in French, uh, alternatively to English. Um, but we will also soon have the website in Spanish, and uh, the idea is that in the following days, the application process will be available in all these four languages. Um, so let's take a look at the apply page here. So as I said, you have two possibilities for submitting your project to the TAP. You can do this either through the online form or through what we call the offline form. Um, so the online application form that you can connect to by clicking right here uh, is especially advantageous and interesting for uh, entities reporting to the Carbon Climate Registry, the CCR, because they can already uh, log in with their 
uh, login details from the CCR and uh, the data that they have inserted into the Carbon Climate Registry is pre-populated for them already in the online application form. So the online application form is, is a, a very interesting for the CCR reporting entities. It can be interesting for other uh, entities as well as uh, you would, you would uh, simply register here if you are not already registered to the Carbon and then that gives you access to this online application form that you can uh, that you can insert uh, your data into then disconnect then come back it's a it's a very practical tool but of course the offline form uh, has the same content as the online form and is a very practical uh, tool as well um, so the process here to for the offline form is quite simple it's a two simple uh, two simple steps so what you would do here is following the first step you would download the application form and once you have filled out the entire form with the project details it should be submitted by clicking here to step two submit you would insert some basic information and upload the file of the application form right here by clicking this button uh, and then uh, you will see later on when I show you the application form that you will also be required to attach some supporting documents such as uh, inventory documents etc. Um, these ideally would be compressed into one single file and submitted by clicking the second choose file button right here. All right, so um, uh, now we can, I think, look at the uh, actual application form that you would have uh, uh, that you would have downloaded by clicking, clicking here. Uh, please note that the offline application form submitted uh, via the website uh, will also be uploaded onto the online platform system by us here at the World Secretariat. Um, so uh, applicants who choose this offline option will also be given login cre credentials to access and edit their application later on. Um, so let's take a look at the application form. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go through all the fields, as you will see that there's a large number of them, but I will take you through the main sections. Uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to stress that the, the form may seem lengthy somewhat, but uh, really has been designed to minimize the workload for applicants while still capturing the, the type of detailed and comprehensive information that would interest the financial institutions that would be looking at uh, your projects. So the application form is composed of six sheets. The first one here is the read me sheet with instructions that the applicants should read carefully before starting the application process. Uh, so there are some information here about the form itself, including the fact that the green sheets here, the green tabs that you see here, are all mandatory. And so the last tab here in blue, the applicant commitment tab, is the only one that is not mandatory. Uh, within the, the form, you'll also see that some fields are marked with an asterisk and others are not. And so obviously the ones that are marked with an asterisk are mandatory and must be completed. Um, some fields, as you will see as well, are uh, have a drop-down menu, such as this one, and otherwise, other ones you will have to fill in yourself, type in your information. Um, the fields in italic that you will see, for instance, here, uh, they, uh, they are mainly there to collect complementary information. So they're not uh, marked with asterisks, they're not mandatory, but they will definitely enhance the value of the application because the more, the more detail we have about your project, uh, well, the better it is. So um, let us go to the second sheet here, uh, the registration tab. Uh, so this one has basic information about the applicant, you know, the, the, the contact point, the political liaison within your local government, 
and also at the very end here, uh, some terms and, and, and conditions. Uh, the, the, the main one being the fact that the information in the following tab, the number two, the tab overview tab, um, can be made public on the online platform uh, that Annabelle talked about that will showcase the applicant projects. So this is really the main term and condition for us. Um, and also there's a possibility here at the very end uh, to indicate if you would wish also to register to the Carbon Climate Registry, the CCR, which is of course the, the, the world's leading reporting platform for local and subnational government climate action. Uh, and for which some of the information in that CCR, uh, some of the requested data is the same as in this uh, application form, especially the contents of the applicant profile. All right, so the next tab is the tap overview tab. This is, uh, this is a very important uh, sheet of, of the application form because it really, the aim here is to capture the transformative potential of your project. So as I said, this is the one uh, sheet, the one uh, information uh, uh, space that will be made available on our online platform so that everyone, everyone can see. Um, this will help us, especially in our selection process, in the first screening of the projects to really determine what are uh, the transformative projects out there. So this one as well, as you will see, it will have some drop-down menus like this one and other ones where you will have to type in your information. Okay, and then the next one is the applicant profile. Uh, so this one is really uh, background and contextual information about the applicant government. Uh, uh, among other information, uh, there's uh, things on uh, the, the, the government's uh, financial information and, of course, the government's climate ambitions. Uh, there's uh, sectoral information that we invite uh, the applicants to fill in for the sectors relevant to their project. So if it's a mobility project, you will have to fill in the mobility section. If it uh, does not concern mobility, then you wouldn't have to have to fill that out. Um, so on to the next one, the project profile. Uh, so this, this sheet contains essential and detailed information about the project itself, um, the concept, the, the management structure, and more detailed information uh, really on the, the transformative potential of the, of, of the project. We, we look, for instance, at the, the co-benefits of, of the project in terms of sustainability, and here again the applicant fills the, the applicable fields relevant to the, to the project. Um, so, the, as, you, as you already know, the, the project can be either mitigation or adaptation and, and uh, you would have to fill in the financial and techni technical feasibility of your project as well and provide supporting documents that were mentioned earlier um, and these are the ones that would be uploaded onto the website as I showed you before. Then on to the last sheets of the application form, the applicant's commitment sheet. So this is the one that is not mandatory in blue. Uh, this is only if the local government council uh, has decided on specific climate targets, either mitigation or adaptation. Uh, in this case, the applicant can report them into the sheet in order to show how, this, uh, how the project submitted can help reach these targets or to show how the commitment itself uh, can be transformative. Uh, so, as indicated earlier, uh, once the offline application form here has been uh, completed, it should be uploaded onto the TAP website by going through the two-step process over here. And um, after submission, the TAP team will upload your content online and provide you with login credentials to view your application online. Um, so, as a Quick reminder, the, the next deadline is on the 15th of July, uh, the one after that is the 15th of August, and no more applications will be accepted after the 15th of September. So I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm done. We've gone through briefly the application process, and I'll hand it back to Annabelle now.
thank you very much, Ade. So yes, I will just uh, say a f uh, final, some final words on um, words on the selection process. So. Um, the selection process uh, is still being defined at the moment, but what we can say for now is that uh, the following entities are going to be involved, that is a TAP project selection panel and an expert committee. So the principle is that each TAP partner, uh, what TAP partner can be of course local government organizations, financing institutions, civil society, NGOs, etc. So each TAP partner appoints a representative to sit in the project selection panel and an expert to sit in the um, expert committee and so the expert committee makes recommendations to the project selection panel. Um, so regarding um, the, the, the selection process as in the um, how it will take place uh, basically this will be based on a consensus consensus seeking approach. What it means is that um, there will not be a strict voting system whereby a majority would win per se, but rather we will look for a general agreement and consensus on what a good uh, TAP project is. So um, that's it for now. Thank you very much for your attention and so we will now turn to our uh, question and answer session. Well, um, yeah. So. Um, uh, at the same time, don't hesitate if you wish so to tell us a bit more about your intention. If you would like to, if you intend to apply, and if you have specific questions on, um, you know, whether your project would fit or not within the tab, well, you can uh, of course get in touch with us uh, afterwards. Or if you just would like to flag to us that you have the intention to apply, then you can also do so now. So. Um, do we have uh, any question for now? Um, so we currently have no questions posed. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Risto Veivo. Annabelle, do you see the question? Um, yes, yeah, so how important is the financing aspect to the program? We don't have a great challenge with financing, but we'll still like to contribute for climate advocacy. Um, well, yes, I mean the, the financing um, aspect is really, well, it's very important. What really the TAP is seeking to do is to connect a um, project who, which needs financing on the one hand and with, um, you know, the financing that's already out there and um, that's available or that um, needs to be connected basically to these uh, needs. So this is the key point, but of course um, uh, the pavilion is also the space where uh, where um, any any TAP applicant really can also present, uh, showcase their potential, what they are already doing. So in that respect, um, of course, the financing in, uh, aspect is important, but we are not um, selecting, uh, you know, this is not the only selection criteria, that's what uh, I mean. Um, so there will also be an advantage for you to apply in terms of gaining visibility for your project, of course, uh, through both the pavilion at COP21 and also on the online platform uh, that will be uh, activated for the whole duration of the TAP. That's not something I mentioned, but it will be activated, this platform, for the whole 10 years of the TAP. Um, so I hope this answers uh, your, your question, uh, Risto. Maybe we can unmute you. Right, Risto, you are now unmuted. So if you would like to um, tell us I mean, if you have any further Thank you for the for the answer. Um, I think most likely local governments in in different parts of the world and in different countries are in yes. rather different financial positions. And and I think that it is a great great objective with the program really to 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 connect the projects and the financiers. But then I think that, uh, well, I have had some discussions with other, other Nordic cities also, and, and in this part of the world, financing is not so much of an issue. 
mm -hmm. because many local authorities are in quite strong financial position. Uh, they raise taxes, they mm. uh, have access to different financing programs, and they also get uh, can get loans from the markets with with very low interest rates at the moment. So, so I don't think that financing is stopping so many projects in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. But still, yes. at the same time, many good projects are taking place here, and and it would be good also to present some of these uh, uh, in order to to advocate the work that that cities are are, are doing, and to to demonstrate that it is possible to to reach uh, tangible uh, results uh, and and to change society uh, into a more more climate friendly mode of, 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 of action and to, to uh, reduce carbon emissions uh, significantly in cities. Yes. And that, is, that is for us, at least in our city, is the main interest and I think, I think the same applies to many other cities in Northern Europe that, that we mm -hmm. just feel that we like to contribute to the, to the common cause globally. Yes, exactly. You are you are completely right on this point. Like that's you know you sharing what you have managed to, to do and uh, the, the projects you have is uh, really a key a key aspect of of the tap as well as to see what is actually possible when cities uh, have the, the the finance and the means to to apply their uh, their ambition their potential. So that that's indeed a key point. Thanks uh, thanks very much, uh, Risto, for uh, sharing. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for the program. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, do we have any other question? Yes, another question came so in. We have from a question from. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Annabelle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> from Jonathan's. Um, when you say financing, do you mean for projects that will deliver a commercial return? Or are projects needed, needing grants, funding for capacity building and education also invited? Um, so what we mean by financing is really both, as in both grants and um, loans. So really the two kind of financing are, are possible, um, as in are included in the in the TAP uh, process. Um, so yes. Um, capacity building and education um, are invited also uh, in that respect. Um, so does it answer does it answer your question, uh, Jonathan? Uh, we can unmute you now for uh, yeah. So you're not unmuted, Jonathan. If you would like to. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah, that does that. That that's really helpful. I think similar to the to the last comments, we we don't necessarily have have problems accessing finance for commercially viable projects. Mm -hmm. What we what we do have a challenge with at the moment is is building the demand in the first instance, and and quite often it is the capacity building, education, and engagement of of decision makers that. At different levels of governance, um, which the challenge. And once we've been through that process, we tend to be able to build significant um, capital programs uh, for investment, which, as I say, we have we have funders for. But it, it, it's the upfront engagement that's uh, a challenge for us often. Mhm. Mm I see. Okay. Well, that answers uh, the question. That's that's really helpful. Thank you. Great. Great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for asking your for this question. Thank you. Um, right. Uh, so, if we do, we have any further question? Now is the time. If you want to raise your hand or type your question. Okay, so no further question. Uh, oh. Yeah, okay, no further question. So in that case, 
Um, uh, okay, we just have to now thank you very much for um, your attention, for uh, registering to this webinar. So this was a quite a general session on the tap. If you would like, of course, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Uh, you should be able to see um, um, the contact of Marie-Sophie Beyer, who is the COP21 tap coordinator here at ECLE World Secretariat. So you can uh, get in touch with her. Uh, you have two specific addresses depending on the type of request you would like, so either it's specific to the TAP or to the COP21 pavilion. And uh, yes, just a final rem a reminder that we will also send you a video from, a um, link to the video from uh, presentation by Yunus Ergan about ICLE's advocacy work towards COP21. So, and final remark is that the webinar has been recorded and will be shared with you uh, very soon after the webinar. So thank you for uh, thank you very much for participating, and uh, we of course we are looking forward to receiving your your project. <laughs> thank you very much.